My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to Benny Safdie on his latest hit, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. The film is about an 11-year-old Margaret who moves to a new town and starts to contemplate everything about life, friendship, and adolescence. She relies on her mother, Barbara, who offers loving support, and her grandmother, Sylvia, who comes to terms with finding happiness in the next phase of her life. Questions of identity, one's place in the world, and what brings meaning to life soon brings them closer together than ever before. So to talk about the latest hit, here's Benny Safdie. So thank you so much for finally, (laughs) we finally made it work. It's a miracle. (laughs) We did. Yes. I'm so happy to have you on. No, it's, it's, it's great to, it's great to be here to talk about everything. So, well, I have to start out. First of all, I am a huge fan of yours. I just, (laughs) I mean, the work that you guys have, like you and your brother have written the films that you guys have put out you as an actor I'm I'm just like my mind is like that blown emoji. <laughs> so <Yeah>. I want to <laughs> know, you know, how you kind of just like to start off quickly before we get obviously into one of the best movies I think of the year. Um, how do you guys pick what you're going to do, and how do you kind of correlate between when you're writing and working on something, when you want to act in something? How do you kind of make those decisions? Well, it's it's interesting because like with what acting has kind of allowed me to do is it's it's allowed me to um, really kind of focus in on things that I maybe don't get the chance to and work that I generate myself, you know? Um, The funny thing about this movie was um, Jim Brooks called me and said he wanted me to like be, play the father in this book. And it's such a legendary book. I tell all my parents, I tell my mom, I tell hurt my aunts and they're all like oh my god this is insane they were so excited and I had never read the book you know um but it was just I knew Judy Bloom and I was familiar with her books other ones and it's just it was kind of remarkable to me because here's somebody asking me to play a part that is not it's not that it's not far from who I am but it it has a lot of overlap with what I what I am in like in the real life you know I have two boys, um, seven and about to be four, and I'm Jewish. My wife isn't Jewish, so there's like a whole oh, wow. there's a whole list there's a whole list of like corollaries that like nobody ever looks at me though as a father or somebody who who would be in that position. So right. to me, it's a very large part of who I am as a person. So I was so excited to get a chance to explore that, you know, and so it was really an exciting thing for me to do that. And that's kind of all that I look at when I'm doing anything is really, how can you learn more about yourself? And how can you do things that broaden your mind, you know? Yeah, I mean, because it's pretty impressive, because between your character, like, the character choices that you make are so drastically different, you know, from <laughs> like, good time through to even like stars at noon, even though stars at noon yeah, is no, a I, smaller role. But I mean, still snap, like that role was so different. So I'm always like, I never know what he's going to do. And then I watch, you know, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. And I'm like blown away. Cause it could not be further from other things. And I'm like, how does he do this? Um, I, it was the sweetest role. Thank and you're, you. You're adorable in it. So I just don't know how you're <laughs> able to like, flip so drastically in these projects it's it's funny because like in each one I have to find a way in for myself you know like there's got to be something that I can because I feel like uh, otherwise I won't be able to make it real and that's kind of all I'm after is I want this person to be believable you know and if it doesn't feel believable to me it's not going to be believable to anybody So that's just kind of my bare minimum. It's just like, I want to make this person and this character feel like they're a real person who's got things going on in their head, you know? And part of that is you got to figure out a way to bring your own stuff into your head to make that reflect on the screen. So it's funny because with Stars at Noon, it was like, again, I'm like, oh my God, A, it's Claire Denis. I can't say no. She's one of the greatest there is. And just, just from a point of view of 
seeing somebody work, it was unbelievable. You know, just the way that she just works off intuition and just, okay, we're all going to stand now for the rest of the scene. And it was just, that's how it works. And I'm thinking in my mind, which is like dumb, what is the coverage going to look like? How are you going to edit this together? And she doesn't care. You know, that's the beautiful part of it. And then here it was an amazing opportunity to just look at like, okay, I've, I deal with this stuff every day. Not necessarily with, I don't have a girl, but I have two boys and I deal with trying to understand them, trying to understand their problems. And one of the things that's so heartbreaking for me is seeing them get older, you know, and, and that kind of double-edged sword where it's such a beautiful thing to be with them in the present moment, but to know that they're going to get older and the problems are going to get more complicated and you're going to have to deal with so many things that you don't understand. And when I read the book, it was just an amazing thing because I started reading Judy Bloom later in my life. <laughs> and in a weird way, I started reading the fudge books to my kids. And it was an amazing way to understand their brotherhood dynamics and what goes on in each one of their heads. So I was not part of the group of people who wrote, read Judy Bloom as a way to understand the problems that they were in in the moment. I was of the, of the camp of a parent reading the book as a way in to a child's mind, you know? And so here with this movie, it was, it was because I don't have a daughter, you know, um, I was like, okay, what would that do to me? And if I take all of these instances of me as a father caring and wanting to help them with my, with my sons, I have a little bit more of an easy time, not always the case for different reasons, but right now at their ages, I can kind of understand some of the things that they're dealing with and going through. But if it was a girl going through something that's that's happening in the book, you know, getting her first period and all these things, I was put in a position in the movie where I'm like, I don't know how to help and I don't know what to say and I don't know how to make her feel better. And that as a parent or pretending to be a parent in this case was such a devastating feeling where I was like, okay, the best thing I could do in this situation and in all situations where you don't understand your child and you love them is just say, you're going to be there whenever they need it. You got the hug ready to go and you're going to take them in and just show them that it doesn't matter. A, don't be afraid to talk to me and B, I'm here for you, you know? And to me, that's where I was like, okay, I could take what I know with my two sons, bring it to this role, but also add this level. I hope it comes across that this, there's kind of a slight sadness amongst his happiness that he wants to be able to help her, but he knows that he can't. But then at the same time, his partnership with his wife, Rachel, who's unbelievable in the movie, but she's, she, he knows, and there's a, there's a partnership there where he knows that she'll be able to fill in where he can't. And he fully trusts her to be able to do that. And I think that's important too. So. Yeah. I mean, there's so many stories, you know, like so many lessons to learn in this story and when watching it as an adult, so I'm, you know, I'm 36 <laughs> years old and I'm going, I'm like, we'll see, like, it's probably going to be cute. And watching it, I saw it multiple times because not only did it make me nostalgic for when I was younger and go, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I remember what, because you want to grow up. Like all you ever want to do is grow up yeah. until you grow up. <laughs> like, and I think exactly. if I, I wrote something like you want to be an adult until you're an adult. And then you're like, no, <laughs> like I want to go backwards. But the movie does, does it in such a way where it's just so pure and so innocent, mm -hmm. so straightforward. And then with Herb and Barbara, I related to you guys on a different level as well because I'm older mm -hmm. and, and yeah. stuff that you go through as adults and how you handle mm -hmm. moving and how you handle, you know, like, you know, having a child and leaving the city and having to explain things to them. And there was, and to kind of mention one of the scenes, there's a scene where she is upset. You know, I don't want to give away too many spoilers if people haven't seen it, but there's a scene where your daughter's upset and she runs off into the room and the two of you are standing there. It's about religion. It's after a conversation about religion. And um, I love when you guys, you both look at each other and you can tell Herb wants to go in and be like, I want to do everything to protect her. And I want to say all the right things. But then Rachel, who plays Barbara, your wife, she goes like, she goes like this, like, let me go in there. And yes, talk to her. exactly. And that's such yeah. a beautiful scene. So mm -hmm. it definitely comes I'm across. Glad. Yeah, no. For sure that, you know, Irv is someone that he wants to, he wants to protect her. He wants to do all the things that a man should do, right? He wants to be mm -hmm. the best husband. He wants to show up um, and he wants to protect his wife. But there's, 
things that come across in life that we all have to face. Right. And just like how For you said sure. that, you know, even in your personal life, that religion aspect, I find that so interesting because when I watched <laughs> it on screen, it was so fun to watch you be so supportive and for a man to be so supportive of a woman and of his wife in, in that kind of situation where religion's coming out or like tough decisions. So mm -hmm. is that something that was also important to you for this project? Because it's very rare to find a man on screen that's supporting his wife and supporting mm -hmm. his wife's decisions and kind of taking her lead. And, and your character does that quite a bit throughout the film. And mm -hmm. it leads to a positive result for the family. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, I guess that directly comes from my own relationship with my wife, <laughs> you know, where she, she for the longest time was like leading the charge and, um, and still is, you know, she's always, she's always kind of able to see things that I don't, I have blind spots and she can point them out. And again, like I was saying before, you have to trust that it's a true partnership and you're both out for your, both your own interests and yourself and what love is and how to raise the family and how to raise your kids the right way. So in a, in a weird way, it's funny. I never even thought of that part of the character just because I figured, okay, this is, this isn't that far from something that I would be a situation I would be in where I think I know the answer, but then here it is. Here's, here's my wife who's telling me, what sounds like the right answer, which is not what I thought. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw my thought in the garbage and just go right ahead because that sounds like the right way to go. Um, but the, the the one inconsistency that I remember my wife pointed out to me was there's no way that you would, you would have been okay with the lawn furniture because I'm like <laughs> so obsessive. I'm so obsessive about certain things. Like everything has to feel like your home right away. And she's like, if if that happened months into us living in the house, it, you would you would have like locked yourself into a room of sadness. But, but in the it, but I, I had to go. <laughs> so she's like, that was the first time I've seen you really acting as a joke, but it was just very funny. Um, but, um, I love that scene. By the way, it gets huge laughs that scene because it's just that's, so, yeah. it's so sweet. It's just so sweet. It was. <laughs> No, I'm it fine. It was very hard. <laughs> you know, it was very hard. And everybody on set was like, wow, how did you do that? The chair was a very difficult thing to maneuver. So to like go in, I had one arm. I had to like pick it up and fold it and like put it out. It was a whole thing. And I just remember it like, I was like, I'm going to get this down. I was going to do it in one full thing. And I ended up doing it. And it was a, it was like a weird physical, because I love physical comedy. So whenever I can get a chance to do it, I do it. Um, there's a couple of instances in the, sh in, in the movie, but, um, uh, yeah, I love Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin and all that stuff. So anytime well, I could throw it in there, I will. I mean, uh, that, that scene in particular is so sweet and I, I love watching you in there and I get so many laughs because it's just so funny. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, I'm fine. Great. It's good. I, and look, I can, throw, I can lay back and like, you know, just everyone just starts laughing because it's just so funny and so adorable. I wanted That's to, know, funny, um, great. Is there something that you felt like you learned specifically from doing this project? Because there are so many lessons in it. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things I learned was just like, well, it, with my own children and religion, I don't really push them to do anything. You know, yes, we celebrate certain parts of um, the Jewish holidays, like the big ones, you know. Um, and But we'll have a Christmas tree, you know, we'll do Christmas and stuff like that. So there is truly... Um, the thing that I find hard is um, you don't want to pressure them into doing or feeling certain things. And so that's kind of where you have, I've, I've, it was helpful in this movie because you get to explore all the wrong things that happen, you know? And so you get to explore the instances where somebody pushing is terrible for the kid and it puts them in a horrible place. So anytime I would feel the sensation afterwards, I could always remember back to the, to the movie and then also just in general it's just it just highlights the the fact that we as humans in our own experiences have blind spots that you don't necessarily understand and the only way you will is if you're willing to understand other people's points of view and be open to that so it's that's not something i learned it's just something that was reinforced you know 
by something like this. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was definitely, um, it was, it was a great experience, you know, and I got to, to meet Judy down there and she's just such an amazing person. And Kelly gave us such like freedom to kind of play around and, and, and really have a lot of fun and allowed the family to really kind of bond in a great way. Um, and Abby is just like insane. And Kathy, oh my gosh, <laughs> that to me was a dream. Cause like I, I said to her, I said, I, I said, this is going to sound very strange, but when I was eight, I was very young. So for some reason we were, I was like in a cabin and like up in Vermont and it was snowing. And my dad, he decided to play us misery on tele, like to show us the movie. And I'm like, oh my God. It was a horrible experience, but I was like, that was my introduction to you. And that was, so it was amazing to like have a positive relationship with her, you know, but um, so funny. yeah, she was amazing. She was so great. Um, yeah. I don't know. It was, and, and Jim was everything really about the project was such a, a nice kind of um, just a nice energy and just every kind of trying to do their best, you know, but yeah. I mean, and it's interesting because right now in particular, the movie, everybody is talking about how we need this movie. Like this movie yes. cannot come at a better time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and again, because it's so pure and so sweet and because there's so much to learn and think of and just, you know, so many layers. I mean, you could really go down a rabbit hole of just ideas and things um, related to the film. But why do you think so many people relate to it in such a way, even if they've never read the book, in such a way where- yeah. There, I mean, it's literally being talked as like the movie of the year. I mean, like people are just yeah. saying, is the movie well, we need? I, well, I think it's just because it's so different than other movies that have come out. You know, it's about such a, a specific thing. And it's about like a young girl's struggle to understand herself. And that doesn't happen a lot. You know, you don't get a movie that that does that. And then that does that in a way that's so honest, you know, and that isn't that isn't using it as a as a punchline, but is using it as a as a thing that people deal with. And I think that kind of sincerity and also just desire to tell a story that isn't hitting you over the head with certain things, but it's just kind of sneaking in is is pe what people really want. And it's very refreshing and it's nice to see, you know. Yeah. And I know we're coming close on time. So I want to um, make sure to ask you too, um, in terms of, you know, the reaction and obviously that people are, are just so excited with it, like I said, and I loved it and I love your character and you're so good at it. Um, but <laughs> I wanted you. to know, you know, what are you like most excited about? Because like, you know, like you had said, you had read the books kind of later in life. A lot of people did. A lot of people read them, you know, when they were younger. I read yeah. some or some older. But this film really puts a, I think, a light on family, the importance of having tough conversations and not mm -hmm. fighting necessarily like all the time about every single thing, um, being OK with letting things go. You know, I feel yeah. like or like, you know, especially with Abby, with Margaret, there's a big lesson of just kind of it's OK to let life just happen versus. Yeah, trying to yeah, yeah. And so I kind of just want to wrap with you know, your kind of overall take of, I guess, like the biggest theme for you walking away from this film and then what you're hoping people get from it because there's such a reaction of love towards it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, yeah, the, the, the overarching thing, I guess, is just this idea that um, everybody has problems and they may be big or small, but they're important to them. And in that sense, it's important important to listen to people and, and be open to them. Um, so that's like an overarching, like societal takeaway that you could take from it. And I think people are seeing that and it's done in a way that's not kind of preaching to you. And it's done in a way that really is kind of fun and, and I think that's resonating. And then just for myself, it was just an amazing experience to kind of let people know that, Hey, this is, this is another side of, of me if you don't know who I am, you know? So it's just, it was, um, again, I was so shocked. I, met, I When I was talking to Kelly and we were Zooming, it was just like, I was like, I really, it's, it's I couldn't get over the fact that I'm like, what made you see me this way? Because I was just, I don't really, it's, 
I don't really put, I put it out there, but not to a certain extent, you know, and it was just, it, to me, it was exciting to know that that came through. And so I was kind of happy to, to, to really play something like that, because like you're saying, some of the characters I do are so, they seem so different than who I am. Um, even though there's all parts of me in there, you know, especially with, um, there's, yeah, there's, and then it's like, and then I have Oppenheimer coming up where I play Edward Teller and, and that's like, it couldn't even be further from myself in the sense that I have this Hungarian accent and it's, but I am, I was a very interested in physics and I was, I was very close to being a physicist, <laughs> specifically, wait for that movie specifically too. with subatomic particles. So yeah, that was, so to me, it was like actually a crazy confluence. But um, but again, he, I, you could point me to like, oh, you were, how did you play an alien? And I could, I would somehow create some sort of <laughs> way in. That's really all the only thing you can do. But yeah. um, I just think, I just think it, hopefully it, it's fun um, for people, the movie, and they have a great time and they tell people and then more people go see it because it's a, it's a great time, you know? Well, I loved it so much. I'm a huge fan of yours. It's so funny to me though, like listening to you to, for you to think that it's weird for someone to see you like that because yes, your characters are outland and outlandish, but the characters that you yeah. play, they're, but they're so good. But the second I heard that you were cast in it, I went, Ooh, I could see that. And then when I saw That's it, good. great, all, like all of your past characters, like were kind of a race for my brain. And then I was like, Oh, hey, wow. Beautiful. That's just like, <laughs> I just like forgot like all these other crazy kind of things. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to Oppenheimer so much, and I've heard so many great things. I've seen a bunch of clips and things, but yeah. Um, I mean, it's just funny because now I look at that and I go, "Oh, that's so weird." Because that because I <laughs> the movie, I just fell in love with you so much. Of course, sweet, you know, beautiful, you know, husband and father. So it's just funny that for you, you were like, why I think of me? Well, why not you? I mean, you're an amazing well, no, actor, what, so, you know, I, 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 I appreciate that. It's just, it's just, it was to me, it's always like, you don't know how, you don't know how you're perceived or whatnot, right. you know? So it, it was just, and it's just funny because it is something that is just so it's what it's, it's what I spent all my time with, but it's not what it, it's just not, I don't, I don't really put it out there so much. So it was, it was nice to be able to explore it in a way. So. Well, I guess just my last question, um, because mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you. I would ask you a million things about all of your <laughs> films because I'm just so fascinated by you. I just like I yeah. think you're a genius with the stuff that you pick. But um, I guess just my last thing. I know, like you kind of touched upon it a little bit. Um, you know, in terms of the overall kind of takeaway from the film. But for fans that are going to see it multiple times and people that love Judy Bloom, and I love that she worked on the film because you know I saw her come up, yeah, and, and all of that. But what is kind of um, something that you're hoping the audience walks away from feeling? Like, so like when I watched it, I walked away, I'm Jewish. I walked away and I just went like, thank God, like someone showed like a real family and there's in a nice depiction and kind of exactly what you said. It wasn't preachy. I didn't feel like I was getting told what mm -hmm. to do. And it just was nice to feel nostalgic and it was nice to see strong women and it was just it just had everything that you would want you know in a film mm -hmm. and so I walked out yeah. and, like happy and changed and then I just went I was like damn Ben was good in that movie so <laughs> for uh for fans like that that just like you know are huge fans of yours huge fans of yeah. pieces that gets them in the door what are you hoping mm -hmm. they walk out feeling like you know do you want them feeling changed moved everything like yeah what's like it, your it's... hope well, the one of the best things that I thought was so fun to hear was the whole talk about Temple. Because let's be real, Temple can be boring. You know, it can be boring. And it was just funny because, like, you don't ever hear that. Like, especially, like, when you're growing up and you're forced to go, it's the last thing you hear from anybody. And then you go there and you're just like, what is going on? This is, this is. I don't know anything anybody's saying. I don't know what's going on, but I guess I have to feel this overarching power overwhelm me, but that's not happening. So it was just so funny when I had to say the line about like, you know what turned me off going to temple? Going to temple. I don't know. It's just, because it's true. I don't go to temple anymore, but I, I still like, we'll have Passover, we'll have Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the only time where I'm like tempted to go to temple because you don't need to understand what's going on. You just need to feel bad about yourself. 
You know, I you know. just got to well, feel and, bad. And I feel like that's and what just... a lot of the Jewish religion is. I always joke yes. with my friends that like it's... the Jewish religion is just to feel bad. Like we, we everything's yes. like bad. <laughs> but that, it's but there's homage, something about, you know, that, so there's something about that that's so incredible to me. And it was like, we had, it was funny because like we had an interfaith marriage and it was so hard to find a rabbi who was going to do it because I had certain ties to specific elements of the wedding. And one of them in particular was the crushing of the glass. And oh. to me, I was like, I wanted to know what that meant. And when I found out what it meant, because if to me, it's always the celebration. Oh, you stomp the glass. You're going to break it into a million pieces. And yeah. that's what I thought it was. But what it really is, is that if you know, I don't know, but if people don't know, here's, here's the answer. Um, when, you, when you stomp the glass, it's at the moment right after you were the happiest during the wedding, you break something to always remind you that it's fragile and you have to take care of it. And I'm just like, that is one of the most incredible messages that you could possibly take away with anything. And it has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with dogmatism. It's just a, a, a practical thing to do in your life that comes from religion. And so that's kind of how I take it. And hopefully that's kind of what the movie is saying also is, yes, it's a part of a lot of problems, religion, but you take from it what you can and what helps you and what you need, really. So, Yeah. I love that. I used to, my grandmother used to say, um, which I think it was kind of like a Jewish tale, but she used to say when you broke the glass um, afterwards, it, your marriage was, you would stay together as long as it takes to put the pieces back together. So that's what, yes, you kind of, well, that's so, what I heard her too. I was yeah, like, oh, so like I got to obliterate this thing. I got to <laughs> obliterate this thing obliterate it. <laughs> beyond. Yeah, exactly. So my foot was like in so much pain, but again, there it was, I, I felt the the pain of the, of the class that's so but. funny yeah that's what I was told my whole life but uh, but it's so interesting to hear that and it's such a great comparison to the film because it's it's mm -hmm. exactly that it doesn't have to be god related which I think is exactly what this movie is saying and it doesn't have to yeah be aggressive and you know conversations don't have to be all of that it could just be and it's okay yes okay for all exactly exactly it's all right but like I said, I would keep going on and on with you because I'm just like so floored. But I want to thank you so much for spending time yeah, with me about this, this film. This was awesome. I'm so excited for you because literally everyone I know is talking about this movie and writing awesome. and the reviews are amazing. So I mean, congratulations. I know it's been it's been kind of it's been kind of uh it's cool to see cuz it had it, it I guess we shot it a little bit of time ago. So it's interesting to see it to come back to it and revisit it in that way and to see people I guess it came out at the right time, you know, so. Yeah. It's good. Well, congratulations. And like I said, I Thank mean, you. your character is just amazing. <laughs> it, like, it's just like, it's so funny because I told you, I just, everything else was gone. I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's right. He plays awesome. people. So you just nailed it. Congratulations. I cannot wait for your next film too. I'm very excited. And all of your, um, your projects, but. Thank you so much for talking with me because this film Thank meant you. a lot to me in particular. I know it means a lot to a lot of people mm -hmm. and your character, I think says a lot in terms of being a man and how to treat a woman and how to be a dad and just all of the things that we kind of need to see right now and that are not being Amazing. shown. And this one. Yeah. Hits. So thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you all so right. much for all your hard work. Thank you. I appreciate all it. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Benny talk about what it was like in the film and talking about some personal stories and some fun things and how we all kind of relate to this film. The movie was released on April 28th and is currently still in theaters, so make sure you go and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. <laughs>